Now let's go to dimensions and try to analyze each dimension that they have created. So let me uh, analyze CT now. So now let's open CT.SQL. So here you will see uh, state, province, country, continent, sales, territory, region, subregion, and all other um, CT related information, right? So CT key is using sequence.ct key. So this sequence, they have created that script here. So this increments sequence one after one, right? So this is related to sequence script. So they, it first create the sequence and then it use that in the table. So it executes all in an order as I mentioned. Okay, so it, it, it is using sequence CD key and then they created a table like this dimension table like this right so let's try to understand how they created this city dimension and what's why do we need to create this dimension in this way and as per the data warehouse rules or if we want to get the same city information from application tables we have to join different several tables right so let's see ct so ct application dot cities has these many columns and it has state province id in a separate table right and if we open that state province table and it has country id and it's pointing to countries table so it's using three different tables or even more tables when in other environments right so it's using three different tables only to fetch city state and region information so only for city it's using three tables so likewise to build a report or to get the source state of a report it has to we have to join different tables in oltp which takes then it obviously uh, query takes more time if we join more tables and transactional tables right so that's where we have to convert the structure into denormalization structure as per data warehouse design so as per data warehouse design we have dimensions and facts so dimensions is used to store the detailed rigid information and where facts stores non-numeric data which participates in transactions like sales orders, number of uh, sales, uh, gross profit, and all to analyze the non-numeric measures information. So we just separate these two based on its type of the field and we create dimensions and facts from CT related tables, right? So CT key is a surrogate key and wwict id is the id that's coming from city id here so this is the primary key in application.cities and city key is a new column that's been added in this dimension table city so it will be a new column and it use sequence.city key which increments one after one so we can also use identity but there are some advantages using sequences. Okay, so this could be either identity column or sequence column. So CD key. And then all other columns coming from application database. So this is how they created this CD dimension. And one more thing here I wanna show you is lineage key. So lineage key is the identifier like a reference to indicate the uniqueness of data load or ETL processing. So this lineage ID key is the identifier that indicates the ETL processing date and time or uniqueness of data loading part. So that's how city dimension has been created and then customer other tables as well. So all these information will be fetching from application and then will be stored into these tables. So once these tables populated, the reference IDs, customer key, CT key, using those reference IDs, 
we will create this fact table. So let's go to sales fact table now. So once the dimension city and customer IDs and other table IDs created, those keys will be inserted into fact table. So all the first keys will be dimension keys and all other non-key related fields are related to measures. So this is how we usually design data warehouse. So this is how Microsoft has created dimensions and facts. So let's say we just understand a bit about data warehouse now. Now let's try even more to understand how technically how they created these objects. Now let's go again to city dimension. It's just normal table, right? It looks like a normal table. Yes, it's a normal table and they just created the table right like right click and then add and then new and then our table. So we can just add a table like this here. So that's how. So I'm going to cover this later, how to use the database project to build the tables to procedures and other objects. So that's how they created these tables. So that's how they created the table with all the fields and all the data types and, and the foreign keys, all the relationship constraints, indexes and all. So once they have the tables ready, table scripts ready, they have to build the ETL scripts or ETL package, right? So in order to build that, once they design this data warehouse, they will publish this into SQL Server instance, right? So now let's have a look at other objects that they have created under this project. So now let's expand integration. So un under integration, we have functions and stored procedures, right? So under function, we have generate date dimension columns and stored procedures, we have many stored procedures. One is get last ETL cutoff time, get lineage key, migrate stage, city data, customer data, all staging related store procedures and tables as well, city staging, customer staging, employee staging. So let's try to understand why and where we use the staging tables. And then they have security and then they have post deployment scripts. So this script will be executed once the database and the structure has been created in database and then it uses this script to insert some data or post deployment actions. And then sequences, all these sequence scripts, store procedures, reseed all sequence and based on the purpose, when we design the project, when we start designing the project at initially, um, we, we will know what all objects, what all scripts we need to build the whole project, right? So based on that, we will come up with all the different types of scripts, objects in a database, data warehouse, and we create those accordingly in the project data warehouse design. So under integration schema, they have staging tables and they have staging table and migrate related store procedures and functions. So how they use this integration schema? Usually when we build data warehouse, we build staging tables to maintain the delta in data from source. Let's say we have just completed the design of data warehouse and we just started loading data into data warehouse. So in the first initial load, it loads complete full data into data warehouse. And in the second load, it has to load delta data, right? From the last load date to the latest date. So in the staging tables, we load the delta data only. It doesn't load, we don't want to populate the full data into staging environment. So once the delta information loaded, we then use store procedures to check 
the data existence in the table and we apply so many other conditions uh, based on our needs and we populate the final data into dimensions and facts. So dimension tables, the actual dimension tables has full information, full data, up-to-date data. And the staging tables has delta data for that ETL. So that's where integration comes. So this is the staging environment that we use within SSIS package. So in the SSIS design, we use these tables to maintain the temporary data like delta data. And then we apply some more rules on this delta data to populate the final dimensions and facts. Now let's open city staging table just to compare the schema with the dimension schema. So you will see the exactly same schema of dimension table, except the city key is, is here staging key. And it has lineage key, which indicates uniqueness of data load. And it doesn't have that uniqueness of staging key, right? So because it's a temporary data. So that's how we are Microsoft built this data warehouse design. It may be confusing for you, but when you go to ETL design, because all these tables will be formed in the ETL while we design the ETL packages. So when we go to ETL design, when we look at the ETL design that Microsoft created, then it makes sense. Okay. So, so this is how Microsoft built data warehouse design using SQL Server database project. I hope it's useful and please comment if you have any questions. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel to encourage me to do more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching my video.